Now, this shaft you see here, this knob is the one near the top front on the table saw. This is your blade tilt lock. This is the blade tilt shaft. And you notice this flange you've got on here. What this does is those two screws from the outside pass through this. And what that does is it compresses this ball on the shaft up against the side of the cabinet. And I'm just going to take that shaft out. Take this out. Just to make this a little more convenient to handle. Well, it was easy. All that rusty part's coming through now. Wow, that thing's getting stiff. I'm going to come out here on the shaft beyond the threads and finish this off. Just about the time I got this blade tilt uh, shaft out of that housing, the uh, tape on my camcorder ran out. And I decided that the uh, smart thing to do would be to take the camera home, download what I had in, the, uh, in my computer, and uh, see if there was anything I said that was actually worth you folks watching. And in the process of watching that video, one of the things that really popped out to me is, is I'm starting off with a really poor condition saw. 95% of you folks have saws that can't be this bad. And, and if you've got a saw sitting in the shop that's got you know, a little bit of rust here and there, you know, say it's your dad's saw or your grandpa's old saw, and you, you want to make a project of it, if you don't have to go to all this work, then the smartest thing for you to do would be to uh, go to a channel with somebody I met a couple months ago. At the uh, woodworking show in Chantilly, Virginia, I met this young fellow named Laney Shaughnessy. And we got to talking, very nice kid. And uh, a kid's anybody under 60, by the way. Uh, but anyway, during our conversation, I asked him what he did, and uh, he asked me what I did. And come to find out, he's uh, got a uh, channel on the uh, YouTube or the internet. And anyway, so when I got back to my uh, room that night, I turned on YouTube, got on the YouTube, and I searched his name, and this kid's got 175 videos up, specifically on how-to stuff. And one of the things that he did an extremely nice job on, on one of his videos, is just de-rusting a saw clean in the top. Now, if your saw is not in this condition and you don't want to watch everything we're going through, it's a waste of time for you, one of the things I'm going to suggest is uh, go to Laney's YouTube channel. As a matter of fact, we're going to have a link to it uh, on the uh, description section uh, in YouTube. So you can click on that link and go right to that particular video. But he did an absolutely excellent job of cleaning the top of the saw. And if it's already out there and it's done well, I see no reason for me to waste my time showing you the same thing. I highly recommend you go to his channel. This, he's good. Uh, that, that boy can talk faster than I can think, let me put it that way. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to reposition this saw and we're going to continue to take it apart. I messed up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to put the blade tilt lock handle back in and the reason I'm doing this is I decided the simplest way to get this saw apart would be to use the trunnions, that's these metal brackets that allow the saw to tilt and all that stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten that back in and that way that whole housing is being held in place. If I take that thing out of the saw and try to work it on a bench it's going to be flopping all over. So. I apologize for the screw up, but we're going to fix it here. 
cat's good and snug. Now all I'm going to do is, if you notice on the video, we have two C-clips. One here, one here. Now one of the things about these old Sears, and I know this, I'm reworking my 40-year-old uh, oh, about 30 years ago, is on this shaft inside this, when I pull this out, we should see two rubber O-rings. They actually uh, turn that part of the shaft down a little bit uh, so you don't have a snug fit. And those O-rings separate the shaft from the sides of the housing so it's not that apt to rust in there. So what we're going to do, and again, this is just a long slotted screwdriver. And there's that one. And there's our second one. Now, when you tear your saw apart, be sure you've got plastic bags to put these parts in. Uh, here later, I'm going to take these two parts, I'm going to put them in a plastic bag, and I'm going to write on there blade elevation clips. Uh, more than likely because of the rust, I'm going to replace these. But I want to make sure I don't get them mixed up, so if I go to a hardware store to buy new parts, I know exactly what I need. Now on this vent, and this is going to be a bit of a challenge here, there's a very thin washer that I see. And we're going to see if we can get that thing to slide off the shaft. When, it, when that washer drops down in that groove, they can be a bit of a pain to get started. And you want to be as careful as you can with these parts especially on an old Sears, because sometimes they can be uh, hard to research, especially if you don't have the original manual. What it is, it's, it's the rust on the shaft has made that shaft oversized. This clip doesn't want to come off. So I may end up destroying that little very, very thin shim they've got on here. I, uh, when I was off camera, what I found was the problem with my fat fingers. I want to get a pair of needle nose. And I want to see if I can work this out. If it gets too frustrating, I'll just break the part. But it looks like it ought to come if I can get it out here far enough. There we go. Yeah, another thing you may want to consider doing while you're disassembling your saw is for you guys who have a smartphone, which I do not, take pictures as you go along. That way you won't get disoriented and mess something up. I'm going to take, actually I can turn that by hand at least a little bit. What I want to do is I want to try to turn that shaft and what I'm hoping is I can get that thing to thread its way out far enough to where we can remove it. And I'm going to come around to the front of the saw. You notice we've got a, a big C-clip here. I hope that rusty son of a gun will come loose. All good it is. I'm going to pull that clip. Okay. I don't know whether you can see this on camera. But this thing has a bend to it. Notice how that's bent? The reason they do that is when you put this clip in, what they want is they want the clip to put pressure against this plate. What that's going to do is minimize the chance uh, of any side slop in this arbor housing. And at that point, we're just going to pull this off. Oh, man, that's rusty. I think the smartest thing for me to do at this point is uh, I'm going to hit this thing with WD-40 or equivalent. I happen to have liquid wrench. And I'm going to lubricate these at least as much as I can. I'm going to soak it fairly well. I tried a couple things off camera uh, that didn't work out too well. And I think what I want to do, I'm going to take this arbor pulley off first. Nice and loose. And this is, this is a gear puller. And what we're going to do is I'm going to position that and I want to keep the, the center post, the threaded part, I want to keep it as close to the center of the arbor as I can. Okay, I'm going to tighten that by hand. And you don't want to start pounding on these because if, when you go to change your pulleys, uh, if they're stuck and you start pounding them off, you could do damage to the bearings and need some serious 
repairs on your saw. So what we're going to do here needs to see if this this will start. Well, that's, that's coming off easy. Surprisingly, the end of the shaft out there isn't rusted. And, uh, something a little peculiar. If you notice, and I don't know, let me turn this off a little bit. If you look right out here, that's a C-clip. And that, what that C-clip's used for is there's a small groove uh, machined in around the arbor shaft and that that, that uh, little C-ring is supposed to sit in that groove and what that eliminates is it eliminates your arbor to be able uh, to go sideways and I can tell you right up front I doubt that there's any chance whatsoever I'll save that one but anyway we have the uh, we have the pulley off what I want to try first I, I want to try to loosen this a bit and this, this is a really old Sears screwdriver. I guess if I break it, I can always take it back for a new one. But where the two housings come together, where, where the housing that pivots, okay, meets with this one, what you want to do, try to find a hairline crack in there, right, where it's not real tight. Make sure you use a dead blow hammer, okay? And I want to see. I've got this thing out about a 30 second of an inch. It's maybe exactly the right way to go here. Now, one of the things I've got to be sure of when I get ready to put this saw back together is I need to make sure that if I put any indentations in either one of the surfaces where this meets with this, I need to get those filed out. And I'm gonna start having problems. Now, if I come over to this side, I've been working probably a good 10 minutes trying to uh, get this thing to where I can get it apart. And you notice I've gone to the point where I've got a big cold chisel here. I've got a couple screwdrivers. I probably have about a quarter inch of clearance between the uh, two housings. And, and one of the things that you want to make sure of when you do this is I think I have this out far enough, right, where we're not meeting with any of the gears. I'll probably try to turn my saw and give you a better idea. But what I did is, is I took a brass brush on my uh, drill and I'm trying to clean some of the rust off. I did find some burrs and things like that. I uh, soaked that shaft. In fact, I'm gonna... And you wanna make sure when you do this that you use a dead blow hammer. Uh, you, this one is, is a rubber... Uh, it's called deadhead. It's a bounce resistant type. You don't want anything really hard in there where you're beating up the shafts. And if any of you are looking for something like this, I found this uh, in the land of orange aprons for about 12 bucks. Okay? And I want to see it. I didn't went that far. Let's see if I can see what stopped it. You have to have this housing out far enough that you're not making contact with the threads on this. Otherwise, you can't move this shaft back and forth. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to see if I can open that up a couple thousands more.
is it's taken a lot of pounding on, but the thing is, with this rubber head on this mallet, I know I can't do any damage to the end of that shaft, and by golly, we're, looks like we're in like flint. Okay. So, still a little on the snug side. And what I want to show you, which makes it amazing to me, this is just hard to get out, is if you notice on this shaft, uh, see if I can figure out where the heck, let me clean this off a bit. Right here and right here are those two rubber O-rings that I, I was telling you about uh, that supposedly isolates this. You notice we don't have any rust at all here. I think part of the problem getting this out is uh, the rust on the surface of this may have actually increased the dimension of the shaft a little bit. I'm going to clean this up a lot better before I put it in, but at least we've got that thing out of there. So at this point, I want to see, that's called dropsy. Let me get these, get these out of here. And I'll tell you folks, it's been a rough day. Um, I've been playing here for about the last 15 minutes trying to get, if you notice, and I'm not stretching this, I, I can't even move this elevation housing that, that supports the arbor on that pin. Um, obviously this is a very worst case scenario. Um, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to pull this whole main housing out. If you're going to take the housing out without removing both trunnions, uh, first thing you have to do is remember to remove the spring and screw on the rear tunnel. What, what that does is it actually sets up the tension that we need to help hold this saw together. So I'm going to take that out. At least that moves. And then So now the front trunnion, remember, the tension set up by your uh, blade tilt lock. So now that I have that done, I should be able to pull this housing out. I'm to the point with this. Evidently, what's happening, I, I can't move this housing at all. Okay, I mean, it, it is just dead, froze up. I can take a hammer and pound on it, it doesn't move. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if I can get the uh, arbor shaft out of this. And I think our problem to be real honest with you, is probably rust between this housing and this pin. It's, it just doesn't allow it to move. You know, that uh, point that's never lubricated on a saw and as rusty as everything else is, you know, that's got to be a mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, uh, see if I can get the arbor out of this, and I'm going to tell you my next approach to try to get this saw running. 